morning and happy Christmas. It's now 11 o'clock and no doubt in some homes there is already wrapping paper all over the floor and lots of noise and excitement. One of the things that I'm missing this year is having the opportunity to play with some of the new toys that the children bring to church. But I've no doubt that there are some parents out there that will happily take my place. Wherever you are and whoever you are with, I hope you feel part of the global Christian family as we celebrate the birth of Christ and experience his presence in our lives. Let us open our time together in prayer. Jesus of Nazareth, small child of Bethlehem, help us see that our homes are the places where you come to live in all your glory. And gather us here, your people, held in the quiet of your birth among us, ordinary and extraordinary, all at once. Amen. Now Mike and Wendy, with some of their helpers, will light the five candles for this morning, and then we will sing our first carol. Loving Creator, we give thanks for the birth of joy in our lives at Christmas. Send us forth as messengers of this good news of great joy for all the people we meet and for all the people around the globe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Adrian will now bring us the Bible reading, and then Judith will give us the talk. The reading is from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For this day is born to you in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to all people. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marvelled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as it was told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Watching numerous nativity plays and Christmas entertainments is part of the lot of a parish priest, and of course of mums and dads and grandparents too. And it's always a joyful part, isn't it? It's been sad that this year we've been unable to go into our schools and watch the Christmas story unfold. I have one or two special memories of some that I've watched over the years. There was the Joseph who cried out, But I don't want to be Joseph anymore! And the wise man who was heavenly disguised and kept losing his false nose. And then there was my granddaughter, I'm not saying which one, who at the age of four played Mary in a St Michael's Church nativity. She put her hand on her tummy and she said, I'm not really having a baby. And then there are those special moments when somehow a hush descends and we're back with the angels and the shepherds as Mary tenderly wraps the shawl closely around her baby. And we can't quite stop the lump that comes to the throat. The poignant moments take us to the very heart of Christmas. There's a tale from another nativity play. It relates to a nine-year-old boy called Tom. He was a great supporter of the underdog. He himself had learning difficulties, but he knew his part well. Joseph knocked loudly on the inn door. Tom, the innkeeper, opened it wide. What do you want? he asked. My wife is expecting a baby, said Joseph. Do you have a room where she can bring him to birth? and Where we can put the baby to sleep? No room, sorry, said Tom. Try next door. So far, word perfect. Mary and Joseph looked very sad, just as they'd been taught. But please, can we come in? Sorry, no room, replied Tom. Please, said Joseph, looking and sounding even sadder. And then a tear came into Tom's eye. He looked at Mary and Joseph. You can have my room, if you like. In the midst of the everyday, the ordinary, there are special moments. The lowly shepherds, outcasts of society watching their sheep on the dark hillside and then the praise and glory of the angel song a vulnerable and dependent baby wrapped in strips of cloth and the God who created the world what a tale of contrast we find in the Christmas story the manger and the star at Bethlehem we see the humanity of God in coming as a helpless baby 
and relying on an earthly mother for shelter and protection, for nourishment and love, a poor young couple, a rustic animal shelter and an improvised cradle. The manger has become a symbol of the God who fully shares our helplessness and humanity. He was born into a world full of suffering and death and in the person of Jesus he showed us how to give and to care and to love, love that in the end cost him his life. And the star to remind us that Christmas is not just about Mary, Joseph and a baby, but also about God eternal and the mystery of God who is beyond our knowing and understanding, but whose love reaches out to each one of us. And maybe it's easy to feel that listening to the familiar story, singing the well-known carols, as we praise him on this special day. But the baby in the manger helps us to remember that God is also with us in the bustle and the busyness of our lives. Yes, in the run up to Christmas with cards to write, food to buy, trees to decorate, excited children and the joy and the laughter. And also in the messiness of our world, a world where there's violence and fear loneliness and insecurity, where there are bereavements and sickness, financial worries and the still present threat of COVID-19. Today though, just for a moment, we have an opportunity to stop, to give to God all our worries and concerns and allow the message of the angel to fill our hearts and minds. Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy. To you is born this day a Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and you will find him lying in a manger. In our Gospel reading we hear that the shepherds return to their work, glorifying and praising God. Their encounter with a tiny, vulnerable baby had changed them. Life would never be quite the same again. Of course their work went on as before, but now their hearts were filled with wonder because they'd met with God that night. And over the years, that sense of wonder has inspired and encouraged countless generations of men, women and children who've tried to live out their calling as disciples of the living Lord. Young Tom, as the innkeeper, did that instinctively. He showed that his heart was touched with the divine spark of God as he reached out to those in need. And we still see that today, don't we? There's another Christmas reading from St John's Gospel. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. It may not always feel like it, but that is the promise we hold on to today. For many this past year has brought sadness and heartbreak. It has been a hard year for all of us, and yet there have been glimpses of light. There are those who are being God's hands and feet in our world today. It is not all doom and gloom. Think of Captain Tom, who at the age of 99 walked a hundred times round his garden and so inspired others to support him that they raised £33 million for the NHS. And now spreading the light further, he's launched a new campaign to encourage others to help support those who feel lonely and frightened during lockdown. This last week we heard of Pastor Mick and Father Alex feeding and clothing the poor in Burnley. People were so moved that financial and practical contributions have come flooding in, truly a light shining in the darkness. I've noticed that each night now the news is ending on a positive note, with a story to make us smile, to uplift us and help us to see the good and the kindness and compassion and the love that is alive in our world today. We may be physically apart, some of us spending this Christmas day on our own, but we are gathered together in this service 
to share in the miracle of Christmas, to meet God's gift to us, to receive God's love for us, and to know that that love will remain with us always. How are we going to share that love with others? Jesus, the light of world, has entered our hearts and fills us with joy. Happy Christmas. Let us pray. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, we remember the tiny baby born in a strange land. Dear Lord, we pray for all those living in lands where there is oppression and wars. We remember children, parents and those alone who live in fear or in poverty. We pray for refugees and for all those who are homeless or living in temporary accommodation. We pray for those who are hungry and for the work of the Skelmersdale Food Bank. In the knowledge that your son was born into our suffering, we ask that your great love will continue to surround and strengthen all those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember the shepherds diligently watching their sheep on the hillside. Dear Lord, we thank you for all those working today to care and provide for others. We thank you for health staff caring for those who are ill. We thank you for engineers maintaining vital services and for those serving in ar the armed forces. As we spend time celebrating with family and friends, we pray that you will be with all those away from their families today so that they will know the joy of Christmas. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember the Magi travelling from the east to worship the newborn king. Dear Lord, we think of those in positions of authority. We pray that international leaders will work for the common good, seeking peace and justice for all people. We especially remember those making difficult decisions as they work towards stability in Syria. Closer to home, we pray for church leaders and to all those who serve at St Michael's and Holy Trinity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember the angels praising the glory of God. Dear Lord, surround all who Mourn this day with your continuing compassion. Do not let grief overwhelm your children or turn them against you. When grief seems never ending, take them one step at a time along your road of death and resurrection in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our next carol, Away in a Manger.
I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for supporting the church in what has been probably the most challenging year the church has had as an institution, arguably since the English Civil War. But the spirit of our faith has kept us and sustained us and also supported me over what has been a challenging year. There are some who have worked very hard in the church. There are those who've worked hard with all the guidelines to make sure it's a safe place for people to go. And also those of you who've worked hard by helping me and putting together these services by sending me content and pictures for our gallery. And so I hope you all very much feel part of the church family of Orton and Bickerstaff this morning. But now we're going to enjoy our Christmas gallery. And the Christmas gallery this year starts off by some wonderful local people who raised money for the Cystic Fibrosis Trust by stepping out for Santa. And then we have our Christmas greetings. <laughs> you all a very happy and joyful Christmas and our prayers for a loving caring and peaceful new year 
Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas! Merry Christmas from the Brooks family! Merry Christmas! And a happy new year! <laughs> no, <don't... laughs> well, Merry, Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas from Stephen Martin in Norfolk. Uh, Snow and Gordon is Muscovy for Merry Christmas and a happy new year from Red Square in Moscow. Dolly Llawen, a blwyddyn newydd iach. Happy Christmas and a healthy new year. Okay. Hello to everyone at St Michael's in Orton. I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I hope that you're all staying safe and following the guidelines and that you have as best Christmas as is possible, given the current circumstances. I'm missing everybody and I would love to be there at the moment. And that had been the long term plan, but clearly that's not possible. Uh, I'd like to say hello to my dad, Stan, to my sister, Judith, and her husband, Graham, and my nieces, Hannah, Rachel and Becky and I thank you for all the cards and gifts that you've sent to me and God willing they have all arrived and I'd like to also thank uh, June uh, for the many lifts she's given my dad down over the years um, to church and I hope that they are both well enough to resume doing that um, once everyone's had their vaccinations and we're into 2021 and I hope that Jack um, can get well soon. Um, so look after yourselves and thank you, Andrew, for this opportunity to say hello and give you Christmas wishes. Happy Christmas! going to sing our final carol for today, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Before we have our final prayer and blessing, I'd just like to remind you that there will be a service in both churches this coming Sunday, and there'll also be a YouTube service going out at 11 o'clock. So, have a lovely Christmas, and I look forward to seeing you the other side. And let us all pray for a happy and healthy New Year for each one of us. Let us pray. God, send us out now, knowing that in small moments, today and every day, we can see you and honour you. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this Christmas time and throughout the year. Amen.